Vision loss can be defined as the loss of the ability to see clearly. So now we can basically dif uh, differentiate or distinguish or categorize this vision loss into the acute, then we have the subchronic and the chronic varieties of the vision loss. When we say acute, it's basically the vision loss within 24 hours, then we have the subchronic kind of a vision loss, which is basically the vision loss within almost two to three days. And if it takes a time duration of more than three days then it's basically known as a chronic kind of a vision loss. Now there are a lot of causative factors which can contribute towards the vision loss. The major causes uh, which are the basically which are laying the foundation towards an acute kind of a vision loss are the um, acute angle closure glaucoma, then we have the uh, lens trauma, we have the macular degeneration, we have the retinal detachment and on the other hand we have the optic neuritis. So these are the major causes which can contribute towards the acute kind of a vision loss in a person. Over here in this section we are just focusing on the causative factors uh, or the causative agents which can lead uh, towards the acute vision loss in a patient. First of all, when we want to discuss or we want to know the causative factors of the acute vision loss, one should know the anatomical structures that can contribute towards this condition. So uh, what are the causative factors? Uh, what are the anatomical structures that can contribute towards the acute vision loss? It's basically, it can be the angle closure glaucoma, it can be the anterior chamber, one of the factors can be the lens, then we can have the cornea involved in the causative agents that can basically contribute towards the acute vision loss and finally we have the retina at our hands. So there are a lot of findings in the retina. It can be an inflammatory, it can be a trauma, it can be ischemic changes uh, that can lead towards the acute vision loss. So this anatomical structures, uh, which again I'll explain uh, in detail, uh, and that can basically lead towards the acute vision loss in a patient. That will be discussed over here in this very first section. Then knowing the history of any disease is again very important. A lot of researchers have been done uh, to get to know this uh, condition of acute vision loss, what are the causative factors and how can we basically narrow down the diagnosis uh, just by knowing or just by getting the complete history from the patient. So a lot of research work has been done and we'll be just going through the historical findings or the historical background of this disease in this section. And then finally, the causative factors. Uh, we'll be discussing the causes or the how to make a differential in a patient when, you, when a patient walks into your clinic and he presents with an acute vision loss. How are you going to make a diagnosis in that patient? That will be discussed over here in this very first section. So moving on, as I was already emphasizing on this fact that knowing the anatomical structures of the eye is again very important over here, I'd like to highlight that cornea is one of the structures over here. Um, it can be a corneal aberration, it can be keratitis, that is basically inflammation, and then we can have any trauma that can relate to this cornea, uh, which is basically covering the lens and that can hinder the vision loss in a patient. So this is one of the structure that can be involved in the development of the acute vision loss over here. And then moving on to the anterior chamber, it can be one of the um, one of the contents of the eye, which can again contribute to the acute vision loss in the patient. And over here, when we talk about the anterior chamber, it can be the uveitis, that is basically an inflammatory condition uh, of the in, uh, anterior chamber. And then we can have the angle closure glaucoma uh, but one should keep in mind that how can you basically distinguish glaucoma from any other retinal diseases or the optic neuritis it's basically the pain that is the major feature when we talk about the glaucoma 
glaucoma is characterized by an increased in the intraocular pressure which can be calculated by a lot of devices out there when you carry out the eye examination the intraocular pressure has to be calculated in a patient if the patient is complaining of vision loss and as well as he has that painful kind of a vision loss and that is again sudden so all of these factors are pointing out towards the angle closure glaucoma in that patient then uh, we can have the lens trauma lens uh, any trauma to the lens or any factors that can affect the lens it can be the cataract condition uh, which can again lead to the uh, vision loss in the patient but when we talk about cataract usually the vision loss is of the chronic type rather than of the acute kind uh, in that patient so this is one of the distinguishing factors and this is how we can basically exclude a diagnosis when we are making out a differential diagnosis in that patient and when we talk about the retina we can have the inflammatory changes in the retina we can have the retinal detachments uh, that can again lead to the acute vision loss in the patient then there are conditions which are known as the optic neuritis again it can be the inflammatory condition in the patient which can lead uh, to the sudden loss of vision in that a patient of whom we're talking about so these are some of the features or these are some of the anatomical structures that one should know about uh, when we are going to further uh, detail these causative factors or when we're going to jot down the differential diagnosis in a patient who has presented to you in the OPD or in emergency um, in emergency ward and he's complaining of the um, acute kind of a vision loss so these are the causative factors that we have to talk about so the acute visual loss can be of the unilateral kind and on the other hand uh, we have the bilateral kind of uh, vision loss when we talk about just particularly the unilateral kind of a vision loss, it can be the retinal arterial occlusions. On one hand, then we have the AION, that is basically the anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So this is basically the abbreviation to anterior ischemic optic neuropathy over here. And it can be one of the causes of the unilateral uh, kind of the vision loss then we have the vitreo retinal causes uh, that can again contribute and that can again cause a unilateral loss of vision in the patient then we have the optic neuritis and then on the other hand we have the hemorrhagic amds acute macular degeneration so this is the abbreviation to the amd is basically an abbreviation to acute macular degeneration over here on the other hand i was emphasizing on bilateral causative factors bilateral causes of the vision loss which can basically include the toxic effects of any drugs or the ischemic or the other cortical changes so usually when we talk about a bilateral vision loss it's the central nervous system that is involved rather than the eye so this is again uh, this is again that has to be emphasized over here and you have to basically uh, get the knowledge or get the concept cleared over here about the unilateral and the bilateral vision loss. Then uh, the history taking in these patients, how acute is it? Is it over seconds or was the development over minutes or did it took hours to the development of the uh, vision loss? This is again going to categorize the vision loss into acute, subchronic type and the chronic type over here. Is it really acute So, uh, or is it such something that is subjective to the patient? Uh, so this has to be cleared uh, at that point and then the associated symptoms so what are the associated symptoms uh, with along with the vision loss is it the flashing lights floaters shadow curtains uh, these are the phenomena that is relating to the optic neuritis over here and then the jaw claudication scalp tenderness temple pain and loss of weight uh, so this is again uh, contributing towards some infectious uh, kinds of the vision loss and then we have the diplopia or the other neurological symptoms so uh, getting to know the patient and making him answer these questions is going to let us basically know the differential diagnosis in that particular patient that we're talking about 
So uh, the underlying risk factors are also excluded over here, ranging from the peripheral vascular diseases, then we have the hypertension, uh, diabetes, cholesterol. These are the risk factors that have to be evaluated in such people. Then knowing the embolic sources and the risk factors for the retinal detachment, for example, myopia, and any family history of the retinal detachments, because basically the retinal detachment is quite related to the genetic uh, factors. So again, knowing this history and knowing the family history uh, is again very important over here uh, from the patient. Complete ophthalmic history, complete systemic history, uh, then the family and the drug history is taken from the patient as well. So in this section, basically, we focused on the causative factors that leads to the condition of the acute vision loss and how can we basically make a differential in a person uh, who has come up to you in the outpatient department and is complaining of an acute vision loss. So I hope you, uh, so that is basically the end of this section. Thank you for watching Scardia.com.